Today, you're gonna learn how to make Chinese beef with onions and oyster sauce. This popular beef stir fry will quickly become your favorite home cooked Chinese meal. Hey everyone, my name is Wally, and this is my new outdoor kitchen in central Thailand. Located in a small tight-knit farming village, surrounded by acres and acres of rice fields as far as the eye can see. It is so outdoors that I still wash my pots and pans with a garden hose. Kitchen sinks are overrated. Just kidding. I really need a kitchen sink. At least there's plenty of friendly local natives willing to work for free, like my camera person. This is little Baxter. Baxter. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. And she even brought friends. Now I swear, these cats, they were never here before. Maybe they're all here for that all important answer to this big question. It might be the same question you may have when cooking Chinese beef stir fries. So one of the questions that I often get asked is what kind of beef should I use for my Chinese stir fries? And I always tell people you use flank steak. It's what my parents use at home and it's what a lot of Chinese restaurants use uh, in their kitchens as well. Traditionally, flank steak is not a high quality cut of beef. But if you cut your flank steak thin enough and sprinkle in some baking soda, which is a key ingredient to making your beef tender, your beef is going to be perfect for these kinds of stir fries. Now I'm not saying that you can't use beef sirloin and ribeyes. My mom used those cuts of beef once in a while too. But if you're asking me what those American Chinese restaurants use, you know, the fast food takeout restaurants in your neighborhood, those restaurants most likely use flank steak. In my humble opinion though, ribeyes and sirloin cuts are better off for barbecuing. So right here I've got 400 grams of thin sliced beef flank steak. Cutting flank steak thin like this is going to ensure that the beef is going to be tender too. And for the beef marinade, I'm going to add in 2 teaspoons of sugar, 1 tablespoon of soy sauce, 1 tablespoon of Chinese cooking wine, 2 tablespoons of water, 1 teaspoon of baking soda. This will help tenderize your beef. 2 teaspoons cornstarch. And just a tablespoon of cooking oil. It doesn't take long to marinate this beef. About 10 to 15 minutes in the refrigerator will be just fine. I need half a large onion. We cut the onions into nice little thin slivers. I just need about 6 to 8 pieces of sliced ginger. I don't eat whole sliced ginger this thick. I don't know anyone who does. But nonetheless, this sliced ginger is used to flavor the cooking oil, which you see later. And here I've got some spring onions, which I'll cut into 3 to 4 inch pieces. Mince up 2 cloves of garlic. You can use more if you wish. One of the perks of an outdoor kitchen is, I don't need to use garbage bags for scraps. Onion skins and garlic skins just get tossed out onto the soil. Sometimes I'll even add some sound effects. Pew, 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 pew. Time to make the stir fry sauce. This is basically a brown sauce. Three tablespoons of oyster sauce. Two teaspoons of dark soy sauce. And two teaspoon of sugar. 1 teaspoon MSG, 1 teaspoon of cornstarch, 3 tablespoons of water. Just give the sauce a thorough mix and guess what? We've made ourselves 
Chinese brown sauce. Whenever you go to a Chinese restaurant, you ever think about like how one guy inside the kitchen can cook up like a hundred dishes? Well, that's because about hmm, 80 to 85 uh, percent of the kitchens in Chinese restaurants uh, use this variation of sauce. So if you have oyster sauce, dark soy sauce, like soy sauce, cornstarch, and sugar, you can make a brown sauce easily. We're going to start off with the veggies first. Heat your pan on medium high. When your pan starts to smoke, add a few tablespoons of oil. First, we're going to cook the ginger because it needs more time for the hot oil to release its aromatic flavors. Remember, even though cooking Chinese stir fries in most cases is about speed, there are steps to follow. Adding too many ingredients at one time can overwhelm the cooking process, which can result in different flavor profiles. Patience is key. It's kind of like when I first dated my wife Dawn. I annoyed the hell out of her at first, but eventually, <laughs> with time and patience, she learned to tolerate my nonsense. Cook the ginger for about 15 to 25 seconds, so the flavors of that ginger gets released into the oil. Once you smell it, it's time to add onions and spring onions. Cook and stir around until the onions start to turn translucent. You also want to look for slight browning on the onions. As the onions saute away and brown slightly, it will develop a sweet flavor. So after the onions have turned slightly translucent and browned, remove to a plate and set aside. This is how the onions should look before you remove it. This is a one pan dish, so you use the same pan, no need to clean. Heat on high and when pan smokes, you know the drill. Add another few tablespoons of cooking oil. Add the beef and spread around until all the beef have good contact with the hot pan. Do not stir around at this point. Let the meat sear on one side for about 15 to 25 seconds. Then it should be okay to flip the meat to the other side. Now add the minced garlic. Adding the garlic at this stage ensures that it won't burn. Mix around for about 10 to 15 seconds. Add the cooked onions, spring onions, and the ginger. Then we add the pre-mixed oyster sauce. Mix and stir well again for about a minute. The cornstarch you added when you made this sauce will create a thick and beautifully glossy sauce. And that, my friends, is how easy it is to make Chinese beef with onions and oyster sauce. I like to top this off with two teaspoons of pure sesame oil. It just gives this dish a nice nutty flavor. But as you know, I do make deliveries. I take bitcoins and camels as payment. I'll see you all in the next one.